Hey guys, welcome back to a new video in the C Sharp Best Practices video series. This is part 10 and if you still haven't watched the previous parts then you can do that by going through the links which are given in the description of this video. And it is not required to watch the previous parts before because these videos are not really connected to each other. They have content which could be watched separately. So let's not waste any more time and let's get on to the first best practice which this video has to offer. The first one is ternary operators should not be nested. So ternary operators make sense when they have less code and are only for if else shorthand they are already messy to look at so we should not make them messier than they already are if we need to handle multiple if else conditions then the best way is to use proper if else blocks or to use switch blocks in this code example you can see that there are two conditions which are being handled using the ternary conditional operators the first one is checking if the input lies in this range or not the second one is if the input lies in this second range or not then a different value will be set in this string field and if none of these conditions are true then this third value will be set now this might be a simple condition but for someone who is not familiar with this code and even if we are looking at our code after some time then we may not be able to understand its proper function by just looking at it and worse if there is any issue to fix in this condition then it could be a while to understand what is happening over here the best way is to write these kinds of conditions using proper if else blocks this code is more clear and is easier to read the same range checking conditions are being applied over here too in the if and else if blocks and if none of these conditions are true then the third value will be set in this string field and when we compare them side by side then it is clear that this piece of code is pretty easy to look at and understand in a single glance rather than this one in which ternary operators are being used to manage multiple conditions just for the reason of writing less code remember writing less code should not be our primary motive the primary motive should be to write code which is efficient and easier to understand by everyone even if we are working as a solo developer because we may have to come back and take a look at our code to fix something and most of the times developers do not have a very good memory of their code and it may take a while to understand what we have done so instead of complicating things without any reason we should stick to proper standards because they will help us in the long run okay so the second one for this video is use name of instead of hard coding field names sometimes we need to use the name of the property or the field we are using in the code in the newer c sharp versions we can use the name of method instead of hard coding the name of the property or the field for example in this code a string value is being written to the console and this string value contains the name of this field which is output now the way in which the name of this field is being written is by using the name of method because this method will return the string equivalent name of any field or property which we have supplied as an argument previously what we had to do is we had to write the string name of any property or field when we just want to use the name of that field but now it is possible to use the name of method and the benefit of using this approach is that if we make any kind of change in the name then we don't have to worry about replacing the string name references of this field everywhere in the code we can simply build our code and we can see the lines where there are errors and then we can simply replace the name of the field everywhere where the compiler tells us to if instead of using the name of method we would have used the string value then we may have missed this area to rename and our code would have written an incorrect value to the console there could be many more situations in which we might have to use the name of the actual field or property which is being used and in those situations it is always a good idea to use the name of method instead of hard coding the name of that property the third and last one for this video is avoid using new grid 
so grid is basically globally unique identifier and it is a value which is theoretically unique and we can safely use these values to assign unique ids to different entities or you know different records etc now whenever we create a new grid then we do that for one of the following purposes which are number one when we have to create an empty grid the second one is when we have to create a random new grid like this one and let's rename this one too and the third one when we have to create a specific type of grid and we can do that by supplying the argument to the grid constructor like this one so creating a new grid makes much more sense when we are doing it in one of the three ways there could be some specific reason for us to declare a new grid and not supplying any kind of argument to it and also not keeping it empty or random but these situations are pretty rare and I have not seen much uses of simply creating an empty grid object so using just a new grid serves no purpose and most of the time it should be avoided as it creates confusion as to what the intent is behind this kind of declaration so that was it for this video guys do let me know what you think about it and if you were able to understand the contents of this video if you have any questions or suggestions then feel free to use the comments area also if you like this video then don't be shy and place a like and subscribe to this channel if you want to be the first to know about new videos and i will see you in the next one till then have a great day